And we are live. Welcome to another stream, guys. I'm having some technical issues on my side for some reason. Uh, it looks like my connection is a bit unstable. Don't really know why. Um, so you might not be able to see my beautiful visage for all of this show, because if I turn the camera off, it's probably going to hold a bit better. But no more about that. I'm joined today by a gentleman called Mr. JP Cronin. And we are here to talk all about basically fitness, everything you wanted to know about male fitness, really, and getting shredded, getting ripped, getting ready for spring and then going into summer, I guess, looking beach body ready and all of that good stuff. So um, JP, obviously some people, we're putting this out to my channel as well as James's and um, Ege's. So there may be some people who are going to watch this who don't know about you and what you do. So did you want to do a brief intro just to let everybody know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, um, uh, everybody that's been watching James's channel um, will have a clue who I am or know who I am. Um, Basically, my name is JP Cronin. I run a body transformation uh, company called Rockstar Fitness. And what we do is we focus on and prioritize um, getting people in the best shape that we can get them in as quickly as possible. So the body transformation stuff, you know, that kind of thing where you see people doing, talking about the 12-week transformations, or you see them in magazines doing 12-week transformations. That's what I do. Um, I'm very, very good at what I do. Um, I've been working with James for um, quite a well now on his own physique. Um, he's also referred quite a few um, clients to me. Um, Troy's one of them. I'm working with Troy now, um, who despite being a little bit, a little bit James Turner-esque in his, uh, his nutritional approaches, is, uh, is actually, <laughs> he's actually doing pretty well considering. I mean, um, what are you like, two kilos down now? Um, yeah. So far and and we've still yeah. yet to really nail the the nutrition side your activities by on i actually did you a feedback video i don't think you've got it yet okay um, yeah yeah I, I was talking about in your activities by on point you know your, your step count's pretty decent and the thing that we're missing in, in this equation is the nutrition it's not quite yeah um so we're going to jump on that that's going to be our focus area for you um Definitely. yeah basically body transformations is my forte it's what i do um it's what I've been doing for a number of years, and um, yeah, I'm very, very good at it. So we uh, last week, we opened this up. Uh, there's this 21-day um, challenge going on. The guys that are all involved in that were given access to a 21-day fitness plan with a nutrition um, plan with it. It was obviously not tailored to anybody individually because there's quite a lot of people doing this, and in order to tailor it individually, those people would need to come and work with me as clients because um, it does take a bit of time and effort. Um, but obviously from from what I've put out, there should be, people should be able to get at least the beginnings of results from that. Um, and today what we were going to do is obviously have a bit of a chat about training and, and, and nutrition and obviously answer any questions people had about the plan or any questions people had in general about getting in better shape. So the floor is open. Absolutely. Because, yeah, basically, as JP saying, um, this was originally going to be for just for the people who, who were on the uh, challenge, the 21 day challenge. And those people are obviously invited and we're going to prioritize their questions if they have questions to put into the chat. But we wanted to just broaden this one out and make it available to the wider public as well, because obviously, you know, I mean, <sighs> fitness is and getting in shape is such an important uh, aspect of male self-development isn't it i mean would you well i guess you're a little bit biased but would you say it's the most important thing i mean it's it's arguably it is right so my point of view on it is 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 very much that we're physical creatures yeah like human beings in general not just men women as well right we're physical creatures and we've moved away from a physical environment we've moved away from an environment where we're just we're, we're allowed to be physical um on a day-to-day -day basis and so therefore that then has a it has an impact on our mental well-being as well as our physical well-being um you know the more active you are the the, the fitter and in, in, in better shape you are the more confident you are the more confident you are the more attractive you are to members of the opposite sex or you know even the same sex whatever floats your boat yes yeah the simple fact of the matter is just by being more confident without anything else, without any other development, you know, without any improvements in, in your sort of 
um, your your financial situation, your your family situation, your interpersonal relationship skills, you know, your 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 ability to just utilize social skills. If you're more confident. um yeah sorry about that i think we uh i think we just fell out of the uh the stream there for some reason um guys sorry about this can you just say um in the chat if this is still working if you can see or hear me um i think jp is back in. sorry uh, about that, man i think there's some problems at this end with the internet i don't know if it's your end man i think this might be my end <laughs> this seemed a bit kind of uh odd anyway I think I got up to the point where I was saying that um, if you're more confident because you're 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 more body confident because you're training, you're you're taking care of yourself, it gives you an edge. Yes, and that's a huge thing for 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 anybody that, that's looking to just stroll up and talk to a woman. Like, yes, I mean you you're you're opening with a random woman that you've you've got no clue how it's going to go. If you're feeling that little bit better about yourself, it's going to go better. It's just like a self perpetuating thing. Yeah, you know, and you don't yeah. need to be in amazing shape. The fact that you're actually making an effort to get in better shape itself makes a huge impact. It's, it's a huge deal. Yeah, yeah. Because it's 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 one. It's letting you know that you're you're getting better daily. You're you're developing yourself. You're working on yourself. You're feeling better. You're moving better. Your energy levels are higher. Your your hormonal levels your testosterone levels get higher you start to feel a little bit more vigorous your yeah. mental state's improved but not just that any woman meeting you that, that sort of gets to talk to you and figures out that oh this guy's actually making an effort to improve himself that itself is a big deal you know they're, they're not just yeah. looking at you from the point of view of this moment right here they're looking at you and they're thinking about this moment right here but what's the potential for down the line yeah you know, yeah. and the potential for down the line is well, this guy's a bit kind of fat, tubby, and out of shape right now, and he's making no effort. That doesn't bode well, you know. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And I mean, like, the, the mental component is such a big part of this, isn't it? Because you're right. Obviously, looking good in your speedos or whatever for the beach is is one thing, but also it's just how you actually feel about yourself when you walk down the road, when you walk into that social situation. Yeah. Look, I, I, I compete in uh, in bodybuilding competitions and I see a lot of the guys that get on stage that haven't put any time and effort into practicing their posing routines. So, for instance, there's less confidence, so they tend to pose small. They tend to minimize themselves. And yeah. we've all seen, you know, we've, we've all seen, like, well, some of us have seen Pumping Iron. Um, and Arnold Schwarzenegger talks about it in, in Pumping Iron, you know, the, 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 the posing small, where you should be kind of, being able to stand up nice and tall and feel good about yourself and that's confidence that's that's knowing that you are you, you're like stepping up you're moving forward yes yes you know? exactly exactly so um did you want to talk a bit about what you've got the guys doing for the uh 21 day challenge and sort of give us a, a, a sort of an overview of if somebody really just you know maybe they've been neglecting fitness maybe they haven't been thinking about nutrition that much how what you would tell them to really just kickstart that journey? Well, I mean, the first thing that, that I would bring up is going to be the nutrition side of things. Okay, um, yeah. So, and this is a good one for you, Troy. You should pay attention to this part. Yes. Um, yes. But your, your nutrition is is effectively going to be responsible for the majority of your outcome. Okay. Right, yeah. Your training, is it, it, it doesn't change. If we're looking to get bigger, we're looking to, to, to lose fat, we we just need to change our diet it's the nutrition that dictates the outcome of the the training it's as simple as that yeah so you know it's the 80 20 that pareto principle you know like 80 percent of your results are going to come from that 20 percent that 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 nutritional side of things okay yes so if you can get the diet on point then you are winning from day one now, the thing is, if you get the diet on point, let's say, for instance, the guys that are following this three-week fat loss that I've put together, let's say they're following it to the T, they're doing everything perfectly, and it's not working. That's a good thing. Right. Right. Because what that tells us is, 
are they gaining weight? Are they maintaining weight? Are they losing weight? Because those three things let us know what's going on. Now, okay. if they are not losing weight and they're doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing on this plan, right, but they're staying at the same body weight, well, that means that they're probably sitting around about maintenance calories for themselves. In which case, we can adjust either activity up or nutrition down. Okay. Yeah. If they're gaining weight, we probably need to, act, you know, activity needs to go up, nutrition needs to go down. Yeah. Right. So getting the diet right is is first brick, right? It's, it's building that foundation, right? Yeah. Everything, yeah. everything on this 21 day thing here is just foundational. It's just right. that first layer. Yeah. And once the guys that are, that are, I mean, it's very much the same as what I'm doing with you, right? We build that foundation layer in. Once yeah. you, once you've sort of demonstrated ownership of that foundation level, then I can start building another level on top of that and giving you a bit more flexibility and then building another level on top of that and giving you yeah. another level. Of, and it goes on and on and on like that. So everything that we do is built on the previous layer, the previous yeah. level. Right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, getting yeah. nutrition right, first and foremost, yeah. that's, that's the big deal. That's the biggest deal, right? Yeah. The next thing is make sure that your non-exercise activity is appropriate. So if you're working in the city and you're sitting on your ass all day, get to 10,000 steps. It's yeah. really not that difficult. Now, you might not be able to do it in week one. In week one, you might, you might put a bit extra effort in, walk here and there where you normally wouldn't do, and you get to 8,000 steps. And think, oh, I didn't get there. I failed. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if you were at five thousand steps and you're now at eight thousand steps, you're effectively doing three thousand extra steps a day. That's yeah. twenty-one thousand extra steps a week. Yeah, yeah. That's a big increase. So now, from there, you just continue to creep it forward. Yes. Yes. Okay? And a thousand steps will take you approximately thirteen minutes if you're if you're walking at a decent pace, like a, a yeah. comfortable pace, thirteen minutes. So it's not that difficult to creep it up week by week. Okay. Yeah, on the so, steps. Oh, yeah. Sorry, carry on. I was going no, to ask. No. I was going to ask a question about the steps thing because obviously we've spoken about this this offline. Um, yeah. It seems like, like I get it. Like over time, it's culminative activity and it's 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 having that knock on effect in terms of what you're. But calorie wise, it seem it does. It seems to burn if you walk about ten thousand steps. How many calories yeah. is that burning? Is it about a couple of hundred like calories? Half no, look. The, it, it, the 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 literature is going to suggest it's about three and a half thousand but what you've got to look at is depending on metabolic rates so some people are going to burn more some people are going to burn less okay it's not really about that though okay what right. it's about is maintaining an average output with a heart rate that is sitting in that zone that is going to utilize and oxidize body fat right it doesn't really you know we, we could burn we could burn way more calories doing high intensity intervals you can't do that all day though. Yeah. You can maybe manage, like if you're really going for it with high intensity intervals, you maybe manage 20 minutes at the best. Yeah. And then it's then it's game over. Now, yes, you get additional epoch, excess post-exercise oxygen consumption when you do things like high intensity intervals. And that does increase your your the amount that you're breathing over the next, say, 24 hours, which means you burn a few more extra calories. But versus having that kind of continuous heart rate in the fat burning zone because you're walking a lot it's nowhere near as effective right get yeah the steps up. it's you know get the steps up especially okay. if you're, you're eating in a relatively low calorie intake if you're you know things like high intensity intervals all this stuff where you're like it really gets my heart rate up i'm working hard yeah you want to work hard people want to work hard because it makes yeah. them feel like they're getting something out of it there's going to be an outcome right Yes. The problem with that is it's glycolytic in nature, so it requires a lot of carbohydrates to fuel it. Now, yeah. we don't really want to be utilizing carbohydrates as a fuel for our cardio. We want to be utilizing carbohydrates as a fuel for our resistance training, which is right. actually high intensity, and it, it, it kind of taps into that same energy system, but it's also doing things to protect your muscle mass and to build some muscle mass, you know, depending on how, how your your body composition is and your training age is at that point in time those two things are going to be what happens um so we don't really want to take away from our ability to take care of the resistance training so we want our cardio or our activity to be as low impact as possible so you can recover from it right the better, I see. the better you're recovering the harder you can train when you actually go to the gym to do your resistance training 
Yeah. But you've also got that constant all day, every day. You're on you, you know, you're you're on the go. Yeah. And the thing yeah. is, for the guys that are doing this and they're doing the day game stuff, there should be absolutely fucking no excuses for getting to ten thousand steps. Yeah. If you're not yeah. getting ten thousand steps and you're running day game. What are you doing? <laughs> like you're, no, you're not like you're not approaching it. You're sitting on a park bench watching everybody else. No, you're you're right because when we're doing like boot camps and things, like sometimes I get up to I can do twenty thousand steps in a day. Sometimes I mean maybe easily. maybe even more. You know, just it's pretty easily because you're just walking yes. around the whole time. So and, and it doesn't wreck you. Yes. Yes. Right. So you know when I was asking you about running because I always quite liked a bit of running as well, but you yeah. wouldn't recommend. It's not an either or because it's running's obviously giving you more potential injury. So, it's, it takes more out of you. Yeah. So, so, so running is going to be what falls into the category of moderate intensity, steady state cardio, which is actually the hardest to recover from. Okay. So, you know, we, we want to look at this in a hierarchy of, of things. So low intensity, steady state cardio, i.e. walking, very easy to recover from. You can do a lot yeah. of it and it's not going to crush you. Yeah. The next, the next one that's easier to recover, re easiest to recover from is going to be high intensity intervals because it's very short duration. Okay. Yeah. Then, then you've got moderate intensity, steady state cardio, which tends to be almost the same sort of duration as the steady state, low intensity stuff, except you're at a much higher level of intensity. You're putting a lot more impact through your joints. It's just that little bit harder to recover from. Now, I don't, yeah. I don't rule it out. Okay. You mentioned, you mentioned the running. You know, if you enjoy running and you want to get like 3K in, 5K in like once a week, i got no problems with that. Yeah. Okay? No problems at all. Because it's just it's just another layer on top. But yeah. We still, want to, we still want to take care of that 10,000 steps as a minimum. Manage your nutrition. Make sure your training sessions in the gym happen. Yeah, yeah. Anything on top of that, as long as it's not eating into your ability to recover, I'm okay with. And Fine. we can... Yeah. We can play with that, right? We can test that out. So you go, say, three, four weeks without doing the running. You're just doing the steps. You're just doing the resistance training. And then we add one running session in. We see how you recover. See how you feel the next day. See how your performance runs. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. That's, that's kind of what we look at. Yeah. Yeah, good stuff. I think for me personally, I probably – I maybe do like one a week or something like that. I don't think it's I, – I totally get the logic of you don't want to overload yourself by doing it too much. Yeah. But maybe just one to blow off the steam. If you enjoy it, if it's good for your mental health, because like I said, we're physical creatures, right? So physical yeah. things tend to make us feel good. So if you enjoy it and you feel it's good for your mental health, it's not causing you any problems with recovery, then fucking hell, go for it. Like no issue at yeah. all. It's just that I won't program running into you into your plan unless you say to me, "Hey, I'd like to do some running." Yeah. Just simply because, from my point of view, it's high risk, low reward. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, I want to keep your joints nice and healthy. It's pretty important to me. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, we've got another guest backstage, uh, another JP. Um, funnily enough, but um, before we bring him on, why don't we have a look? There's a couple of questions that are coming from guys in the challenge yeah. already. So. How about this from Mustafa Mohammed, who says, um, I've been using progressive weightlifting and it's given me great gains, but now I'm stuck at certain numbers and can't seem to exceed them. For example, 55 kilograms in chest forward press. Okay. That's a good question. So, so progressive overload as a, as a training tool is a, is, it's a fantastic thing. It's one of the, um, it's one of the bigger drivers of um, muscular hypertrophy. So it's great that you've been using progressive weightlifting. Um, but what you will tend to find is that you'll come to a point where you just simply cannot progress that exercise any further. Yeah. At that point, what you want to do is you want to pick an exercise that is 90% similar to the one that you've been doing. So you've been, say, for instance, you've been using like 55 kilograms chest forward press. I'm going to assume that you mean a bench press for now. Okay. Um, so if you've been using a bar, an easy option would be to switch to dumbbells. It's 90% similar. You'll yeah. use some different sort of uh, muscle fibers, different alignment on that. You'll be able to get stronger on the dumbbells over time. And then when you eventually cycle back to using the barbell, you'll start off a little bit weaker than you were possibly. And then you'll blast way past the 55 that you were stuck at. Yeah. So what I tend to do is I tend to have like a rotation of three exercises. So for instance, if I was doing flat bench press, I might switch from a flat bench press to um like a smith machine bench press yeah right so now it's stabilized 
so I can get a little bit more out of it. And then after the Smith machine bench press, I might switch to dumbbells and I'll do those for a period of time until those tap out. And then I'll cycle back to the barbell. That's interesting. And that way I'll be able to go past where I was previously with the barbell because I've worked on my pecs with them with the, the, the bar stabilized. So I'm not having to use so much muscle to stabilize. Then I'll have gone back to dumbbells, which require even more stabilization than the barbell. Yeah. And I've got stronger with all those stabilizer muscles with that additional pec that I've, that I've built. And then I move back to the barbell and it all comes together. Yeah, that's really interesting because, um, I mean, what I found, and we'll probably get into this more, I don't want to make this a personal training consultation for me, but it might. this might be of some value to the audience. Um, what I found over the years, because I've actually been, people probably wouldn't believe me, but I've actually been going to the gym for, for a long time. I've been going in, and, you know, I've done various, you know, I've gone through periods where I'm really rocking it. I've gone through periods when less so. I've had, you know, trainers and stuff in the past. Um, what I found is my journey, and this is totally on me, but my journey's been a bit like that. So yeah. there were periods of time when I was getting, you know, the weight was was pretty high. I was doing pretty well. Um, and theoretically, there's this idea, oh, you should just, it's this linear progression and you should just sort of like, you know, you're, you, it's getting heavier and heavier the whole time. For me personally, it hasn't worked out like that because what sometimes happened is, say I had an injury or I was ill, I had to take some time out of the gym, sort of it went back down again. Then I go back and, uh, you know, I think it's partly to do with my implementation of habits because I'm probably not no, notating everything carefully enough and going, right, I want to push back to this level. But do you ever see that with other clients where yeah, it's sort of going up and down a bit? Over a, I can stop and start. Yeah, over a longer period, let's say, over like 10 years or something like yeah, that. Yeah, what do you do? To go wrong because most people, when they start back again, try and go back in at a level that, that they were at relatively close to where they were previously. Yeah. And so they end up either hurting themselves and having to take a little bit more time off or just being a little bit too sore for too long after the workout and having to push the, the next workout back um, by a fair amount. And and that just kind of stalls your progress out. And also there's there's the, the psychological part of it, right? Which is that, you know, you, like there's Rob, that's one of my clients. Um, you, you walk back into the gym and you're just, like disheartened because you're not moving the sort of loads you were previously and it, yeah. it becomes psychologically kind of painful to go because it reminds you that you know i used to be stronger um so it, you've got to be able to let go of your ego when you're in the gym you've got to be able to say look it doesn't matter what i did before right yeah. I, i've i've bench pressed 140 kilograms for six reps i can't do it right now yeah doesn't bother me right doesn't bother me at all like if i want to get back there i'll get back there yeah okay but if it doesn't you know if it's not part of my 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 sort of if it's not going to impact my outcome i don't care yeah the mission, is, the mission is all important the mission is all that matters yeah the modality that you use to get there the the load that you use to get there is not important what, what's important is that you can put together something that you can be consistent with over time you can train you can eat you can do your daily activity in a consistent enough manner that you you hit your averages, your average number of calories, the average number of steps, the average return on your investment in the, in the gym. Yeah. You, know, I mean, you get a little tiny bit stronger each session and you put that together over a longer term. Mm. Yeah. I, I know, you know, I, 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 my whole thing is I do these fast body transformations, right? But from day one, it's always about this is just getting you to the starting line. This is just getting you to the point where yeah, you look good, but you're now in a position to really develop your physique, to really improve the way you look. Yeah. And it's trying, okay. to, build those, it's trying to build those kind of um one of my old my old mentors, a guy called Charles Poliquin, used to, to, to call it Kaizen. And it was just continuous okay. small improvements, continuous forward movement. Yes, yeah. I've heard that that applied in you could apply that in people talk about that in terms of business and other forms anyway. of success, but yeah, no, you're right. Those tiny little incremental improvements over time is what makes all the difference in that. I mean, it, it does, it makes a huge, it's massive. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we, we, we forget that, that, you know, adding, adding like a pound to the bar every week or, or, or a quarter of a kilogram to the bar every week at the end of a year is quite a lot. Yeah. Yeah, for you know, sure. For it's sure. A big, it's a big increase. Yeah. So, you know, and the same goes for, for, for dropping a little bit of body fat. Drop a small amount of body fat over time 
like week by week, you know, 12 weeks goes by and, and, and you look a hell of a lot better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just small things together, small steps, consistency being the biggest factor. Consistency yeah. is king. So the more consistent you are with your nutrition, the more consistent you are with your activity and your training. Like yes. That, that, you want to see better results, be more consistent. Yeah, good advice here, guys. So, look, why don't we bring in our other guest, who's another guy called JP, um, but but fortunately is on the on the screen is Joshua. How are you doing, man? Are you all right? I'm awesome, brother. How are you doing? Can you hear me? Yeah, you're a little bit slightly muffled, maybe. Really? Okay. okay. Let me let me uh, take off. I want to use these headphones then. Let me try. So basically, can you hear me now? yeah. Can you hear me now? Is that better? That's okay. better. That's better. Yeah, yeah. So basically, um, I'll let you introduce yourself in a second, Joshua. But um, we met fairly recently, didn't we? Back at, over in Playa del Carmen, Mexico, which is, I assume, you're you're still there at the moment, right? Um, yeah. And um, it was uh, during when we were doing our boot camp. Well, we were doing the uh, we were doing a boot camp there with myself, Mister M, a bunch of students, and you were you were helping out on that. And um, mate, it was an awesome time, wasn't it? It's just such a good. It's such a good laugh over there. It's such good fun over there, man. Yeah, we had a great time. So I'm just trying to, uh, I'm just trying to get make it sound really quiet. Hold on. Um, your um, yeah, your volume is sounding good. So what's, let, let me just hit my speakers. This sounded really quiet. Was it really bad the audio? It was a, a little bit, but you're sounding good now. Okay, okay. Hold on. Give me one second. Sorry. Okay. One okay. Second. Well, there you go. So, uh, but anyway, obviously, as you can see already, uh, JP, Josh is a fairly, fairly uh, ripped gentleman himself. So um, it'll be interesting to see. It'd be interesting to see if you guys have got any sort of like slightly different takes on it. Um, uh, sorry, give me half a second. No problem, First time man. using StreamYard. Uh, <laughs> there's always these technical there's always these technical issues issues can you hear me yes yes you can yes good that sounds a little bit low man also i'm getting an echo now on me as well <laughs> well going well going well okay all right all right we're we'll still okay cool we're good we're good all right sorry what was you say Good stuff, man. Yeah. No, I was just saying it was a great, great time meeting you. So you're you're based in Mexico, right? Obviously, you're from London originally. So did you want to yeah. tell the guys a bit about who you are and you know what you do and uh, and how like, maybe how, even how you met Tusk, if you like? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, uh, my name is Joshua. I'm a body transformation specialist. Um, you know, I've been training clients professionally uh, for about five years now. I've been training myself for twelve years. Uh, okay. but this is my life like the reason I started training was because I had lots of self-confidence issues so I had a very feminine physique so skinny upper body and I had huge glutes and big thighs so imagine wow. that so so growing up when I was like you know from the ages as long as I can remember from like seven to you know onwards when I was first having started having an interest in girls you know I found it really hard you know I found that the yeah. girls would always go for like the good-looking guys and the you know, my best friend was really tall, light skinned, like a Chris Brown lookalike. And there's yeah, me, yeah, yeah. you know, my feet were a mess, my body was a mess. And I had like, you know, I was just embarrassed and ashamed, you know, and all the girl, you know, all the Stacys and the Beckys were going for them, you know, they weren't going for me. So I was like, you know, I'm tired of this, you know, I want to feel good about myself. I want to have the hot girls. And, you know, I just realized, I had one realization. I went to a carnival in London. I think it was in South London somewhere. And I remember seeing these two, I think two or three black guys and they were surrounded by these girls and they were huge big muscles and I was like oh that's the secret so and obviously I grew up watching like people like 50 cent girls everywhere you know big yeah. muscles and I thought okay that's, that's how you do it so um yeah I just went crazy with it like literally um I was a, I was a big sports person so I was playing football up until university and then when that stopped I changed that with the gym and it took me about six months to really see any progress I, I made it a big thing that I didn't look at the mirror for six months okay. I was like I trained in big t-shirts. I'm, like, I'm not going to look at, look at the mirror. How this is going to work is that I'm going to um, focus on strength. And um, so I just focused on that. And then, you know, after six months, you start getting compliments and 
girls start noticing, all of a sudden, you know, guys start respecting you more. And it just became, when it hit that point, it became an addiction. Right. And then I just never yeah. stopped. And, you know, it changed my life completely. And it's probably where I base most of my confidence from, I'll be honest. You know, yeah. some people base their confidence on money. Some people base their confidence on uh, maybe their personality or their job, maybe. Like, for me, fitness, you know, and it's given me so many opportunities. And, and it's got to the point now, like, you know, like, obviously, fitness is not everything. You can look great, but if you are shy, I see all the time, guys looking great. I mean, guys look great, girls will go up to them. Like, it's fine. But if you're shy, you don't open your mouth. You know, you don't hold hide up, hide, you don't hold eye contact. You don't communicate yeah. clearly. You can still struggle with women, so it's not everything. But exactly. if you can communicate, you know, game, and you've got the physique, it's, it's game over. You don't exactly. even need money. You could be broke. You could be broke. It's game over. It's a wrap. And exactly. you see that if you play the common, you can see that. Like, come out here, guys. Come out here. Yeah, practice your game. Night game, day game, online game. You can do it all. It's so easy. Wait, and and um, Joshua is smashing it out there. I have to say. I mean, you are like. Uh... I don't know, man. I mean, you're, you're, well, I think you, have you, are you, you're in a relationship at the moment, but you basically, oh. sorry? I was engaged. She's gone now. Back to the streets. Oh, well, okay. All right. Okay. So, so, but there's a lot of opportunities out there, isn't there? And you, you speak to a lot of people because of your, you know, the, the, the other work that you're doing. So like, um, you, man, you must be absolutely smashing it out there at the moment. Yeah. Well, yeah, I was throwing parties three times a week, uh, literally on the street six days a week promoting the party so yeah uh so yeah you see girls from all over the world here like you know, yeah you've got the latinas argentinians you've got the mexicans you've got some a few brits not many you've got a lot of canadian girls who are beautiful americans russians ukrainians you've got like people all over the world literally here uh whole melting pot and girls are constantly coming and going so you obviously got the locals but if you want i'd say avoid the locals just go for the tourists they're literally turning over every three days it's, it's crazy like it's, it's yeah. paradise for a man. Like you've got the internet, yeah. like I can't speak any more highly of this place. So look, um, now we got you both on. We've got another question here from the guys in the group. Because basically, Joshua, what we're doing, well, you, you know what the backstory to this, don't you? We've got this 21 day challenge. We're helping out these dudes uh with game, but also with the fitness. So we've got some questions coming in from the group. Um, so this dude here is saying uh that that Bosti is saying challenge. Some tips for skinny guys are also welcome. I only game when I work out three times a week. Any less just results in either baseline or losing weight. And then he puts his um, his weight. My record is 78 kilograms, hard to maintain. So, I don't know. JP, did you? what do you reckon about that? I mean, yeah, that's is... how I... Oh, yeah. sorry. Okay, you're JP, I'm Josh. Sorry, I don't know <laughs> about JP for this. Sorry, you're JP. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's just number us, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> JP number. one, JP two. Yeah. Um, my thoughts on this are that, I mean, if this guy's saying he's only gaining when he's training three times a week, it, it's got nothing to do with that. It's everything to do with what he's eating. He's not eating enough. Okay. You, know, you, can train, you can train two times a week. You can train four times a week. The big, the big thing that's going to make a difference to that if you're trying to gain muscle is, are you eating enough? Pure and simple. Fine, fine. Okay, so it really is, like you were saying before, it really is the nutrition, isn't it? It really is that element to it that's going to make that difference. Nutritional status dictates the outcome. It's that simple. Yeah. But, the, I mean, the, the other thing is, from my, I mean, surely working out three times a week, that's fine, though, anyway, right? I mean, if that's yeah. what you need to do, what's what's the issue with that, really? I mean... There's, there's no issue with that. Three yeah. Three times a week and, you know, eat more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then... You're trying to get bigger? Like, add a small amount of calories, see what happens. If it doesn't happen, add another one. Okay. Keep doing that until you start to see the scale weight creep up slowly. Okay, okay. And Joshua, what do you reckon? Because you said that you were quite skinny, which is hard to believe, to be honest, having met you. I mean, you've got guns like bloody, I can't even think of an appropriate uh, comparison, but those guns are, you know, pretty intimidating, man. Um, so what do you reckon then? I mean, how did you how did you manage to sort of bulk up and like put on that mass? Well, I took a mass gainer. Uh, I went to the protein um, GNC or somewhere like that and, and got my uh, serious mass. Uh, and yeah, I, I took that. And I wouldn't necessarily say you need to take that. But, you know, okay. I mean, I took, I took like those supplements for years, you know, like not steroids. I've never taken steroids. I'm just saying, I'm just, I'm just putting it out there. You don't have to take steroids. You can do it naturally. It'll just take way longer. But I was taking all the protein powders, all of that. And, you know, that's all marketing. You don't need to do that. But that's what I took. And uh, I okay. actually got to the point where I actually got a little bit fat when I first started. Right. Uh, okay. uh, I remember getting a bit of fat on my hips and uh, my glutes, which is a big thing. That's a big part of my thing. 
uh, and also my stomach. Uh, so I had to do the cutting thing. I would say, guys, don't do the bulking and cutting. But if you're really skinny, just go all out. Like, I would say, you know, at the beginning, it's so hard that just eat whatever you need to. Pizza, burger, do what? You probably say something different, JP, but I'm saying because, you no, know, no, so no, many no. people... That don't... I'm going I'm I'm to I'm I'm agree with you, right? I mean, if you're trying to gain weight, you're trying to get bigger, you, you were using mass gainers. That's the same thing I'm talking about, right? It's just eat, it's just more calories. It's more food. It's more intake, right? Yeah. That's simply what it comes down to. I mean, I'm not a big fan of the kind of main gain thing where, you know, you, you don't do the bulk and the cut because I think that like, it's, it's you, you're not going to gain significant muscle mass um, by kind of following that approach versus eating a lot of food. Um, and, you know, it's, it's kind of about managing... When I say bulk and cut, I'm not talking about like get sloppy. I'm not talking about get fat. Right? I'm talking about stay within a certain level of your body composition as you push calories, as you increase calories, and you get more and more used to tolerating a certain amount of carbohydrates and, and, and calories in general over time. You, you just keep creeping up, creeping up, creeping up until you get to a point where it's like, okay, this is the tipping point. I'm actually starting to, to tip the edge. You mentioned uh, Josh gaining a little bit of fat around the hips. You know, when you hit that point where you notice that things are starting to slide, that's when you pull yourself back into a diet. And it's like a cyclical thing, you know? You're just going through, like, a period of revealing the muscle that you've built and then a period of improving the muscle that you've already got. Um, but other than that, no, I mean, I'm, I don't really have too much of a problem with guys when they're first starting out. They're trying to get the calories in and they're struggling to get the calories in, adding a bit of junk food in. I don't have a problem with that at all. Good news. Good news for the junk food fans out, <laughs> out there. Um, oh, sorry, that's not you, brother. Oh, oh okay, okay, all right, okay. <laughs> I thought I had my free pass then, but obviously not. Um, so, um, is there anything else on this dude then? Because basically, skinny guys. Um, yeah, we've kind of covered that, really, haven't we? I mean, I mean, Josh, what do you reckon about? He's saying, "Oh, I've got to train three times a week," but I mean, surely that's that's fine, right? I, I think three times a week is kind of sort of average i would say right if somebody's looking to improve yeah average you want average results what we're going for <laughs> you know well you're you're, probably in the, you're 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 probably in that gym every day aren't you that gym down in um you know on uh fifth avenue uh well my currently my routine is routine is uh six days a week okay but there's been times i've done i mean i used to do security i used to do 12 hour shifts at the o2 so I'll be doing 12, like, sometimes, so I'll be doing Monday to Friday, 12-hour shift. Then I'd have, it was weird, like, so at those times like that, obviously I wasn't able to do six days a week. So I would do, uh, I'd say I would do, like, four, four days a week. Uh, I wouldn't go anything lower than three. Like, if you've got a busy schedule, you've got family, you've got work, like, when I say about the amount of times you can train, just do the most consistent one. Like, you don't okay. want to go crazy. Like, I know some people want to start and do seven days. Um, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to be the, I'm going to change my life. I'm going to do six, seven days a week. And then, you know, two, three weeks in, you can't maintain it. And then you miss a session. And all of a sudden, you miss two sessions and three sessions. Do you know what? If three is all you can do, and you can imagine you could do three for the rest of your life, do three for the rest of your life, and then just add it from there. And don't ever go lower than three, if that makes sense. Because remember, this is a lifestyle change for the rest of your life. Too yeah. many people are probably on this for the 21 days, and they want to stop. Oh, okay, I felt a little bit better after 21 days. Okay, I'm done. And then the thing is, if you're not improving, you're getting worse. It's like it's like anything. This is a spiritual process. Like if you're not continually strengthening yourself, it's like it's like if you're let's say you stop smoking cigarettes. You know what I'm saying? Like at first, you know, you might be all excited, and then you, you stop like focusing on it, and you might have the urge to smoke again. You know, there's always that little voice in your head like saying, "Oh, stop work out. Oh, eat bad, eat bad." You know, so you have to keep on just like pushing and pushing. So that's what I'm saying for the rest of your life. So really commit to this long term. Uh, so if free is all you can do, and you can commit to that for the rest of your life, do free. Uh, and then, you know, build up from there if, as and when your situation changes. But if you want to go and get, um, like, you know, like, amazing results, you have to do amazing things. It's just the reality of life. So, you know, I yeah. always you, I'd go for four if possible. But if three is what you can do, do three. There's nothing wrong with three. I would, yeah, no, I, I completely agree with the idea of, um, you know, you've got to take massive action and all the rest of it. But having said that, JP, I guess for you, it depends what their objectives are because, what, what do you feel about people? What do you, What's your view of somebody going to the gym every day or going to the gym like six days a week? Is that is that does that fit in or does it just depend what their objectives are? I mean, it depends on how much recoverability you've got. You know, if if you're like Joshua's obviously living out in Mexico, he's he's living the life, he's having a great time. 
it's 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 not as high stress as somebody that's working in the city that's maybe a corporate lawyer who yeah. simply isn't going to have the capacity to recover from six sessions a week they've maybe got a family as well it just doesn't work so yeah. you've got to weigh up the like what kind of commitment can you actually stick to like josh was saying right like what can you actually do and maintain as a long-term thing as a lifestyle mm, mm. versus you know like like the, the outcome will happen. It just depends. Like the time frame is just affected by how much you're putting into it, right? Yeah. But you know, I, I, honestly, I think four days a week is is brilliant. Um, three days a week is fine. No issues at all with that. I've even got a couple of guys that, that do two days a week that are in fantastic shape. These kind of yeah. people are these kind of people are, are like you know mergers and acquisitions lawyers that, that that work stupid amounts of hours and and are constantly under stress. Mm. Over overloading them with like four days a week of hard training like they'll fall apart yeah but somebody that 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 for instance i've got a guy who's he's a bodybuilding client um he competes in classic and he works 12 hour shifts doing security like josh was talking about right yeah and he'll, he'll be four days on and then three days off so he's he's training like three days a week but those three sessions are balls to the wall you know and then when he's working, he's working. Those are relaxation days for him, effectively. You know? So, you know, if, if, if bodybuilding clients can train three days a week and get results, odds that are working, sitting at a desk, you know, having with a keyboard, they're going to be all right doing the same. Yeah. And there's also the uh, issue of uh, recover recovery time, though, isn't there? Because the, the argument I always hear against going too much going to the gym too much is that you need your muscle grows when you are resting. So if you go every day, but then I guess you get around that because you're exercising different body parts, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, and you know, I'm assuming we're talking like natural bodybuilding, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, you have to be smart. Obviously. Uh, I mean, that's all I have experience in, but you know, guys that, obviously dabbling the other things so if you that's why i don't really look at bodybuilders so much like but like actual like professional bodybuilders you know people are on that it's a completely different game it's a you know it's a completely different game to speak on but you know the best thing to do is yeah do the bro do, do the bro split I'm a, I'm a big fan of the bro split like chest like legs shoulders back you know that's my typical thing i've done four day split and you know i mean i've never ever had recovery issues i've never found that ever to be a problem if you're doing a full body workout and you're doing that every day or you're doing like legs every day or something like that. I would always give your body uh, 24 hours or 48 hours rest, if that makes sense. So I wouldn't do like chest on a Monday and Tuesday. If you want to do chest twice a week, or if you want to do a push day, you know, twice a week, give it at least a day rest in between. Like, mm. and obviously just listen to your body. If you're really struggling and you're really sore, you know, listen to your body. But, you know, it's mind over matter for most of it, I would say anyway. Make sure you're yeah. eating well, make sure you're sleeping and just, just go crazy. Just, just, just. Just make it a lifestyle. Just think about lifting and just get into the process of going to the gym and then worry about the rest afterwards. Like, it's so hard. That's the thing. So many people fail. I can count on the number of, of one hand how many friends of that I went to school with that have got results. Probably none. Like, because it's just so hard. But you have to just really go all in and just, like, really envision what you want. Like, you really want it. And then, you know, the rest will be easy. And, you know, you'll figure it out. You're, you're going to meet people in the gym. You're going to find training partners. You know, you're going to you're going to figure it out. But once your desire is there, the burning desire, it's like anything. The burning desire is there. You're going to get the result. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. That is a good point. Burning desire, really important. We tell that to guys in terms of the dating stuff as well, right? Because if you're just sort of like, yeah, you know, I kind of like to meet some girls, but you're just kind of half assing it. You don't have that burning desire. You're not really going to get results because you've got to take it to that next level. If you want to get, if you want to get a real to see real improvements in terms of your results, in terms of your lifestyle, it's having a good enough why. Exactly, exactly. Um, so we've got King Cole, who's a um, a friend of me and James. We we're doing a lot of work with him in Russia last year. Uh, probably won't be again for a, for a little while. But um, um, King Cole is saying, how important is whey protein? Uh, right. It's it's just a source of protein. You can replace it with anything. You can replace it with chicken. You can replace it with egg whites. You can replace it with pretty much any animal protein. Okay. Uh, if you're just looking to keep it low, like low fat, then you know liquid egg whites is a good replacement for it. Okay. Um, yeah. It's 
not essential. Protein intake is, 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 is mostly about overall protein throughout the course of the day. As long as you're getting enough spikes of muscle protein synthesis from enough feedings, it's not, it's really convenient. Yeah. It tastes nice and it's a good thing to have as a stock gap, but it's not essential. Okay. Yeah. So just, just to add to that, yeah, do you know what? For me, yeah, I think it took me until I got to Mexico to realise the, the marketing manipulation that I was under for so long. You look at all these bodybuilders, you know, even my friends, they're all, they're all influencers here. They're all like literally doing their set and then they conveniently drink their protein literally afterwards. Like, it's, just, it's so funny to watch. But, you know, it, it was mental and I actually think that actually helped me because I remember every time I felt like I ran out of my protein and I was going to the gym, I felt like I wasn't getting results. So really it was a mental thing for me. And I say it helped me on a pure mental side. But actually, it's all about real food. And I learned that from uh, Rich Piana, RIP. Like, it's all about the real food. Like, but, you know, if it mentally makes you feel like you're getting results, then by all means, you know, get your, your, your monthly subscription of uh, whey protein. But, yeah, like, as, as an actual protein, nah, nah, you don't need it. But if it makes you, you know, go harder in the gym, makes you feel like you're getting more results, like, by all means, buy that. Buy it. Do whatever it takes. Just play those little mental games with yourself because... It is hard. I can't keep saying it's hard. Just keep yeah. Well, it's it's definitely, well, like JP said, it's definitely a conven it's definitely convenient, isn't it, right? Because it's it's definitely gonna if you, you know you need to eat a certain amount of protein per day. If you're sort of some, somewhat struggling with that, it's definitely gonna help you to bump up there quicker, um, in a fairly easy digestible form, right? Yeah. No, this it's convenience. It's yes. pure convenience. And that that's that in itself is a good enough reason to have some in stock, but you shouldn't put too much stock in its like being necessary, like there's nothing in this is necessary. There's like, there's no exercise that you have to do. There's no food that you have to eat. You have to find the stuff that works for you and that you right, can find yeah. right now, right? So it's it's about realism, not like optimal. Optimal is brilliant. Like the, the, the optimal program on paper, the optimal diet on paper is fantastic. And if, they, if you can stick to that, brilliant. But most people have a hard time sticking to optimal. But if you can find that middle ground, that realistic that they can stick to, that still sits within the averages, then those people will get in shape. And it's a consistency thing. Yes, indeed. Um, and then Brad has got the question that I think we're all we're all basically is on the tip of our tongues. Um, but how do you get your abs to pop out, though? <laughs> What's the simple answer to that? I mean... From my point of view, you like some people have got genetically good abs, right? And they're going to show regardless of of whether they're they're training them or not. Like, I I never train my abs. Like, if you've seen any pictures of me on stage, like I, I don't, I, you know, I, if I train my abs, I'd be I'd be probably wasting 15 minutes a day that I didn't need to waste because they just I don't think it's required for me. But for other people, they have relatively shallow abs or they have you know, like a shallow abdominal wall, it might be a good idea to train them. But the simple fact of the matter is you're not going to see them unless your body fat level is low enough. So, mm -hmm. you know, if you, if you feel that you sh you've got shallow abs or, you know, if you've not been lean enough to see them before, then, you know, get lean. But if you've been lean enough to see your abs and they're still a little bit on the shallow side, then, yeah, you might want to do some abdominal training. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's, it's like a, you know... This sort of question is is a little bit too ambiguous because everybody's different, right? Mm. You look at you look at somebody like um, let's go with uh, Josh. How are your abs? You got you got thick abs, right? Well, do you want me to answer the question? Yeah, go like for it. The question that we have. Okay, so the way I would say because I'm I'm, just, I'm looking at your picture, Brad, and you look like quite lean. So maybe you're asking that from like a skinny fat perspective. Now, as, as JP was saying, like, it's all about body fat percentage, yeah? Now, the, if you're skinny, you don't want to be leaning down right now. You want to focus on the body fat percentage. So the way you can decrease the body fat percentage is by increasing your muscle mass percentage, if that makes sense. So if you're a skinny fat and you want to get your abs to pop out, build the muscle first. And then once you lean out, you know, all the compound movements, all this exercise, you're going to be building your whole body. Legs, quads, you know shoulders back train everything and then once you get some muscle the abs are going to be developing as well then once you re reveal the get rid of the body fat you're going to have abs but if you're skinny now and you're trying to get abs i, I tried that it's not going to work it's not going to work but um I, don't, I barely do abs i barely do abs if anything 
I'll do abs a little bit. Like, I'll do like maybe three exercises a week. But the main thing is when you train your whole body, you're lifting heavy, the abs are going to be there because, you know, it's your core. Like every time you move, you move left and right. It's your, it's your abs. It's, it's all moving. So number one, focus on building the muscle. The abs will come when they come. Like don't be going to the gym and then just looking at your abs, looking at your abs. Just it will come. It will come. But, you know, the main thing is reducing your body fat after the muscle is there. Because obviously the abs are muscles, right? So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of this is down to nutrition again, isn't it? Really, it's just getting that body fat down, and you know, otherwise it's uh, it's it's just not going to happen. Um, so Manny was saying, I train in boxing two or three times a week. When I'm running or jogging, my endurance is a lot better than when I'm not. So there is that. I mean, again, I guess it depends what your sort of like what your objectives are, right? Yeah, I mean, I mean if, you're, if you're trying to be, like, if you're trying to have more endurance when you're boxing, then absolutely you need to do your road work. That simple. I box for a long time. Like I hate running, but you know, if I'm, if I'm going to be boxing and that's what my focus is, then I'm going to get my road work in. Yeah. So if that's what your focus is, then yeah, get it in. Indeed. Yeah. It's just different. It's horses for courses. It's you know different yeah. objectives, different different sort of uh, you know you're going to have to do different actions. The specificity here at play, right? We we have to we have to be training towards a specific goal. If if the goals are um, too far apart, you know, if they if they if they don't sort of line up, then you kind of have to pick a horse. You can't ride two horses with one ass. <laughs> it's, about, it's about you know um, improving your physique. Then train specifically to improve your physique. If it's about being better in the boxing ring. Fucking train bit to specifically for boxing. Mm. You know, it, there's plenty of time in 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 life to work on both of these goals. Yeah, and actually, that is raised an interesting point, doesn't it? That people need to be clear in their outcome. And you, when I, you know, you, your initial when you're working with the clients, JP, your your initial thing is, you know, you're you're getting people to define their outcome, right? Because if you haven't got a defined outcome, then you're going to be shooting all over the place, aren't you? And probably not achieving anything. Yeah. I mean, having a defined outcome allows me to build a roadmap. You know, it, it, it paints a picture of, of where you are right now, where you want to get to. And that, yeah. that allows me to build that roadmap. Um, without that, you're, you're, you're just sort of pissing in the wind. So it's pretty important to know where you are and where you want to be. Exactly. Um, and then, Josh, have you got anything further on that? Yeah, exactly. It's so true what you're saying, JP. And, um, you know, we're talking about dating, right? So I guess we're talking about aesthetics or am I wrong? It's aesthetics, right? I, I would hope so. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm wasting my time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, look, I don't want to swear, but yeah, what you doing? What, what's the boxing for? Are you trying to fight someone? You know, you, wanna, you box, you know, you're going to get arrested, like, unless, you know, self-defense, you know, unless you find it fun. Like, if you want to get girls, it's aesthetics, wide shoulders, slim waist, big arms, big chest, you know. Look at the most aesthetic guys, you know. Look at all these Gymshark athletes, all these um, uh, Vanquish athletes. Like, look how they look. Like, look at the tension they're getting. That's the look you want to go for. And when you're setting a goal, go for the most unrealistic goal you can go for and then just spend years doing it. So, I'll be honest, my, my you know, I, when I first tried training, I didn't, you know, I just wanted to get, get big. After a year, I discovered a guy called Simeon Panda. And, you know, he was the 14 years natural guy. Now, you know, you can say, you know, he's fake natty, natty, whatever you want, but I believed him. And I, with my whole heart, I was like, I want to look like that guy. Like that, you know, you look at his comments, all the girls are just like, it's crazy, the comments he was getting. So I was like, oh, that's the secret. So, yeah, you know, I set a completely unrealistic target and I'm still, you know, a way off where he is. But because I set the unrealistic target, me not hitting that target means that I'm way above everyone else. Like, not everyone else, but most people, you know, in terms of the gym, because I set that target so high. If I said that I just wanted to gain a couple of kilos or look a little bit leaner for my holiday, I would have given up a long time ago. It wouldn't be worth waking up at 5 a.m. before work to go. Like, why am I going to do that? Why am I going to have all these meals? Why am I going to be dieting? Like, what's the what's the desire? Like, it's so, it's like, I keep on saying it's hard. Like, it's, it's, it's hard and it's easy. I love it. Like, it's, for me, it's meditation. It's fun, you know. And when you start getting yeah. results, you get the bug, you know, girls start liking you. Like you're gonna, you're gonna love it. You're gonna fall in love with it. But until you get to that stage, 
you know, you just need all the willpower in the world because, you know, we know all those guys that, you know, they go to the gym for four weeks, they, 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 and then they stop, you know, go another four weeks and they stop. Like, that cycle is horrendous. It's the worst cycle in the world. You're wasting time, resources, money, energy. You know what I'm saying? Get to that point where you feel good and then 10x it. It's like Grant Cardone. I'm a big like, follower of Grant Cardone. 10x rule. You know what I'm saying? He wants to make yeah. probably 100 billion. He probably wants to be a trillionaire. So the yeah. fact he's got a billion or whatever, it's like, okay, you know, and he's still going to keep working. You know what I'm saying? If his goal was to make just uh, a million, you know, and by the time he even got to 500,000, or even he got to a million, he's probably going to just relax and the money's going to go down. You have to just, you know, keep setting targets, like never retire, keep working, keep working. And then yeah. that's when you're going to really get the wow transformation and the girls are going to love you. And yeah. the game, you're going to be playing game on easy mode. Easy mode. It's, you know. <laughs> so your, your results, your dating results now, uh, compared to what they were before, it's night and day, is it? Oh my goodness. Now is the point where, you know, girls are trying to just get too much in my space now. I'll be honest. It's like, now I'm following the rule. I'm following the, who's that guy? Black Dragon. Uh, yeah. The once a week rule. Don't date a girl more than once a week. Sometimes I know it's, I know it's hard. You know, she wants to come over. You've got to limit it to once a week. I'm, I'm not even, I'm just, I'm being honest. That's, that's, that's the problem Mate, you're going to get to. Once I you get to the bad. other side. I, I feel for you, man. I, I think a lot of people watching this, they're like, they're all, they're all shedding a tear at these, at these, at these issues that you're suffering from. <laughs> well, the thing is, if you're here as well, you're going to have all these like South American women who maybe look at you as a maybe opportunity as well. So it's not even just yeah. the look. It's just like, this guy's from England, you know, he's a cool yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's, know, it like, uh, what's it like over there at the moment? Is it still really busy? Still like loads of people around? And Man, it's booming. Since you last came, it's now we're approaching spring break. So now the weather oh, is mate. perfect. And uh, yeah, it's just another level. It's another yeah. level. I need to get back over there at, uh, at some point soon. Um, I don't know how long you guys have got because we've been on for, well, me and JP have been on for nearly, for about nearly an hour now, but we can, we've can we got a few more questions if you've got a bit more time. Sure, man. Yeah, go ahead. One meal a day, good diet. Um, horses for courses, right? There's no such thing as like, the, the 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 way the one way of doing things but i think one meal a day you're you're missing out on a lot of possible opportunities to spike muscle protein synthesis so it's not just going to the gym that's gonna help you build muscle right you, you spike muscle protein synthesis when you go to the gym but you also spike muscle protein synthesis every time you have a meal so we want to have frequent meals spread out over the day uh, one meal a day, if you can fit all your protein into that and all your carbohydrates and all your fats for the day into that, you're still going to be missing out on massive opportunities throughout the day. There's only a certain amount of, of, of protein that you're going to be able to synthesize in any one hit. It's mm -hmm. not necessarily about whether or not you can absorb it. Right? Your body will just excrete anything it doesn't need anyway. It's more about can you utilize it once it's been absorbed. So I think if... The, 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 there's a case that can be made for intermittent fasting. I mean, I, I operate like a, a modified intermittent fast when I'm dieting. Yeah. Um, where, I, where I don't, I mentioned this in the last call, right? I don't eat before 11 a.m. Um, because that allows me to push all my meals back. So I don't yeah. get hungry at the end of the day when, when most people struggle when they're dieting. Like towards the end of the day when there's nothing going on, you're not working, you've not got anything going on, and you're kind of sitting around a board, that's when the cravings hit you. That's when the kind of the desire to eat hits you. So, uh, I operate a kind of a, a modified intermittent fast to avoid that, but um, I wouldn't I wouldn't go down the route of one meal a day. Mm, yeah, yeah, no, fair enough. I have, I, I have a couple of other things that are kind of similar to the to the to the acronym, right? I tried GOMAD. I don't know if you've ever tried that, Josh. It's a gallon of milk a day. <laughs> On top of your daily intake of food, you you drink a gallon of milk, and Jeez. I also drink jaw pad, which is jar of peanut butter a day. Jesus. I need a lot of calories. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I need a lot of calories. Like, Josh, you, you were talking about it previously, being a skinny guy when you were younger, right? Um, when I started this, I weighed 142 pounds. Like, my walk around weight now is 205. So, you know, it, I, I get look, the skinny guys, I get where they're coming from. It's hard. It is hard. Yeah. But you just, like, it's the eating that's hard. It's not necessarily the training. It's eating enough food to gain muscle tissue. Yeah. That, that when, for the skinny guys, for the guys that aren't skinny, the eating's the easy bit. The dieting's the hard bit. So it's kind of like, there's mm. a balance, right? We're always managing food volume up or managing food volume down, depending on the person and the goal. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, hot, yeah. And steam, hot and steamy says, Joshua, do you need a license to carry those guns? Ha, ha, ha. But um there's a question here. Uh arms, how often should I train them? I mean that's fucking ambiguous. <laughs> Sorry, man. I feel like JP's uh, the quality of the questions is not is not up to scratch <laughs> today. No, uh, it's it's not it's not that. It's just that you know how how often should I train your should I train my arms? Are your arms underdeveloped? All right. Yeah. What's the rest of your week looking like? What's what's your body composition looking like? You know, yeah. Are, are, when you think about training arms, are you just thinking about your biceps? A lot of guys, when they when they want big arms, they do nothing but bicep curls, and they're missing out on fucking two thirds of their upper arm development. Now, most of your upper biceps. Some guys are going to have genetically good biceps. They'll have really really short attachments, and it'll be easier for them to get large biceps. But they might conversely have pretty small triceps. What are you going to work on? You're going to work on the thing that's not genetically that strong. You still have a bit of bicep work in there, but you got to assess what you are, what, where you are right now. Assess what your arms look like. The the, the small muscles they can recover pretty quickly. It, you know you can train them quite frequently, mm. but it just it depends. It, you know, it's, yeah. the, it, it's the answer that we should almost be giving to every single one of these questions to begin with. Oh, yeah, it which, depends. Which I suppose, without wanting to go straight into like a pitch for you guys, but I, I guess that's a good reason to have a mentor, to have some kind of a trainer with this, right? Because it, it is so specific to each person, right? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, like you, you've been through my assessment process. Yeah, right? it's not, it's not short. There's a lot yeah. of questions, right? I mean, it took, it took you what an hour and fifteen minutes to go through the form. Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. Run, run about that. That's the average. So, and then you send in photographs to me, we're going back and forth. Sometimes I need videos to see what you, you know, what your movements look like, especially if I get the photographs through and I'm seeing something in the photographs that does it, like rings a bell. I may be looking at like what the keyhole's like, what's his knees yeah. doing, what are his ankles, are his ankles collapsing, what's going on? And, and so it's, a, it's an in-depth process and that's because I need all that information to be able to put together a plan that fits yeah. you. And that's Josh, yeah. And Josh, would you agree with that, that when you're working with clients, it's got to be very individualized to each particular guy? Well, um, firstly, can I answer that question that you asked? Or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. Yeah, yeah, I understand that thing as well. For me, arms are actually my weakest body part. Well, arms and calves, lower the lower calves. And for me, like, I tried the whole training, train them like, every, like multiple times a week. And I found that the best results was actually just doing a couple sets. So, for example, I do a couple sets after of triceps after... Um, after doing chest, so typically, you know, I'll, I'll do maybe maybe eight, maybe six to eight sets of one exercise afterwards. But I used to have an arm day, and I actually found my better results were actually doing a little bit less. And I learned that from I can't remember who I learned that from because you're actually working your triceps when you're doing like all the chest exercises. You're working yeah. your triceps when you're doing back. You know, you're working your biceps as well. So I, you know, the, I, you know, but then let's try experiment. That's the thing, as you said. You know, you can find a mentor that can kind of do the experimentation for you or you can experiment yourself. You know, give it two months of doing it like multiple times a week and then do another two months, you know, of doing it maybe a couple sets like I'm suggesting and just see what works for you. But in terms of the mentoring, like it is so crucial. That is, I mean, I can't believe, yeah, we've taken an hour maybe to get to the point maybe because yeah. before I stepped in the gym, I hired a trainer. Like, this is probably the secret to the success because I saw all my friends, you know, I was in university, I went to Brunel University, West London, and they were all going to fitness first and they all had their protein shakes and their gloves and they were all like, ready to go, you know what I'm saying? And they would get excited for two weeks and stop. And I saw this, I, I observed this, I observed this. And I was like, hold on, something, this seems like a, a common theme. Let me do this differently. And I remember this, my gym had a huge guy, this guy called Adam, a uh, huge guy. And I was like, Joe, you know how much for a program? All I did was pay him like 50 pound, whatever, for like a little, you know, student prices, little PDF thing. And I followed that, like the Bible, everything he said. And, you know, a lot of the advice is advice that you couldn't have sold me when I first started. He, the, the best advice he gave me, he couldn't have told me when we, you know, when he was selling me the program that was going to happen. But it was the little things. Like a, a big breakthrough for me was when I was doing like a barber, a uh, uh, dumbbell row. And I remember I was doing like 30, 25, 30 kg, feeling like I was strong and this and that. And he came over to me with his friend, you know, big guys like, you know, why are you doing that way? You should be doing way more than that. Like, basically embarrassed me in front of, like, the gym. And mm. I was like, okay. And I went, I picked up the 100, uh, the 50 kilo one, the biggest weight in the gym. 
and I could barely do two reps. But then, like, by the end of, like, four months down the line, I was doing that for eight reps, and my body was changing. And, like, just having – because when you have a mentor, it just – he's giving – It's like I said, this is the spiritual process. So when you have a mentor, he's, he's basically putting his brain, his lens onto you. This is it. This is how, this is how it's going to work. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know, so you're seeing the world how he sees the world now. You know what I'm saying? You think it's just go to the gym. It's more than that. It's so much more than that. It's all these little bumps and holders in the road that you can't even imagine that you're going to come across. That, you know, someone like JP with all these years of experience is going to be like, here you go, like, avoid that, avoid that, don't do that, don't do that, yeah. do this. And you've got the whole internet. Think of it. You know what? You've got the whole internet in your hands. You've got Google. You've got YouTube. You can get results, but this it's information overload. You need yeah. a mentor. It's like you, Troy. It's like you as a dating coach. You know what I'm saying? You're saying, okay, like, there's all this kind of game. Do this game. Do this approach. Do this pickup line. You're saying, no, 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 no. No, no, no. For you, it's just this, this, and this. Really break it down. For now, you're going to focus on this. So that's why a mentor is everything, guys. A mentor is everything. Just get a mentor. It's yeah. worth the money because you're going to waste the money anyway. In terms True. of you're going to go to the gym, do the membership, drop out. You know, just hire the mentor. Hire whoever you hire them ASAP, honestly. Honestly. Good advice. A follow on from that. The way Josh talks about training his arms, tacking on at the back end of like a push day or a pull day, I do exactly the same thing. Right, that's 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 how I like to train arms. Like when they're already a little bit battered, um, I'll pick a couple of exercises, work them through two different ranges, done. It's cool. it's, it's it's brilliant. Um, but no, I I 100% agree, man. Like people aren't paying me to to write programs for them. They're paying me for this, like for the eye, to be able to look at what's going on as they progress and 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 know when to make adjustments intuitively. Um, so that's that's yeah, one hundred percent agree. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't want it to sound like a fucking sales pitch because like people either want to work with me or they don't want to work with me, um, and I only want the guys that that want to work with me. I don't try and talk anybody into it because simply put, if I have to talk you into it, you don't want it enough. Yeah, it's as simple yeah. as that, right? So I don't want it to sound like a sales pitch, but it does make a difference. I've had. You know, several people that I've I've paid over the years to mentor me. I've I've spent a lot of money on going to see people, on consultation calls, on having coaches. You know, I, I, my, my first couple of bodybuilding shows, I had a coach for myself. Uh, it's it's important because it takes that to be able to see, right, how does this guy's process work? Which part of that process worked for me? And I can then take that away and work, make it work. You know, some of it does work, some of it doesn't work. Sometimes you learn what not to do. And that's still a positive. Yeah, you know? yeah. 100 percent agree exactly exactly well look, let's round it off now um because we've all been on for for a little while but there is one last point here max poor says can i get as fit and strong age 35 as i was age 19. Uh, how, how fit and strong were you at 19. Uh, like if you were, we go. We if go. You were a professional bodybuilder uh and you've had you know 20 years off then get to work find out like yeah like why would you why ask the question? Why not just go and take action and get after it? Fucking yeah. find out. But yeah, I guess I don't know, Josh, if you've got any other thoughts on that. I guess overall, if he's saying, can you, you know, are you past it by thirty five? I would have to say, I mean, that surely, you know, guys in their thirties and into their, I mean, much older can get into amazing shape, right? If they're just doing the right things. I mean, look, I'm 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 going to be forty three in May, and you know, my, my plan this year is to do at least two bodybuilding shows back end of September, October. Yeah. You know, I, I, I was a professional snowboarder until I was 29. When I, when I turned 29, I was sitting there at the edge of the bed and like I'd had abs since I was 17 years old. I'd been in great shape for my entire life. And I sat at the end of the bed at 20, at 29 years old, looking in the mirror and thinking, fuck, I look like Gollum with hair. <laughs> I, I didn't look good. I didn't look the way I used to look. So I had to go through that process of I've I've hit like just about 30 years old and I've let myself go. I need to fix this. Mm. So yeah, I mean, look, 35, go to the gym, start eating right, see what happens. Absolutely. You're not gonna know until, you're not gonna know until you try. And even if you even if you couldn't get as fit and strong as you were when you were 19, you'll still be fitter and stronger than you were six months ago. Yeah. And yeah. fitter and stronger than most 35 year olds. So go on, get after it. Yeah, just on that point. Yeah, for, I mean, 30, from 30 years old, you're hitting your prime. You're hitting your prime, man. Oh, you're man. Your prime years, yeah. 30 to 50 and, and even beyond. I mean, I hope you're not looking at 19 year olds thinking they can, like, take your girl, like, aim you. 
you have a nice hot girl and there's this 19 year old he's gonna he's gonna just grab her off you like <laughs> and you know it sounds like a limiting belief brother like these are the mm. worst like you're just limiting your success even you thinking about that but happy it's good you asked that question because if you didn't you'd be going around thinking look at all these 19 year olds thinking like they're stronger and they're bigger than me like nah nah man you're the they should be looking to you like max oh, how can i you know and JP, you're 43. That's incredible. You're looking amazing, brother. Just, just saying. You've got the fighting of youth up there in just Scotland, genetics, is it? Genetics, honestly. Yeah. Good stuff. So there's hope still for 35 year olds. Don't worry, guys, if you're watching this and you're, you're age 35 and over. But I mean, seriously, I mean, come on. I've seen dudes who are, you know, significantly older than that in amazing shape. I mean, anything's possible. You've just got to do the right things. Absolutely. Um, Okay, all right. Well, thanks ever so much for coming on, guys. So, did you want to just um, maybe JP and then Josh? Uh, JP, did you want to tell the guys where they can find you and if they want to work with you, what the what the process would, would be? Uh, I mean, it's it's pretty easy. Head over to rockstarfitness.co. Um, you'll be able to get me on WhatsApp. There's a button on the website you can click. Um, have a look at my results. Have a look at my philosophies. If you think it's for you, drop me a message and let's talk. Um, Drop me a WhatsApp, we'll book you in for a consult call, we'll have a call, and then we'll go through the assessment process if you decide you want to work with me. Great stuff, great stuff. And Josh, what what's the uh, situation with you? Is it do you working are you working with guys just in person locally or do you do any online consultations or what's the uh, where can guys find you? Yeah, I've just uh, opened up my online coaching program. Uh, see, I'm looking looking for seven guys who want to reshape their bodies. So the best way to do that is hit me up on Instagram, Instagram.com. Uh, forward slash Joshua dot the dot God and uh, DM me reshape and then let's get cracking. Good stuff, man. Good stuff. Um, so that's Joshua the God. Yes, Joshua dot the dot God. Yeah, we're all gods. We're all gods. We're descended from God. We're made in God's image. So you know, we could talk another bit about that. But yeah, yeah, we're all gods, and I'm one of them. So let's go. <laughs> awesome stuff, man. I'm just trying to type it in, actually. Is that Joshua with an H? And then dot Joshua, H no, yeah, J O S H U A dot T H E dot G O D on Instagram. And I should put Joshua Palmer. Come, come up, Joshua Palmer as well. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it showing up? I'm just typing it onto here. So, guys, uh, check out um, Joshua yeah. the God on Instagram and uh, get in touch with, with Joshua. And uh, JP is uh, Rockstar Fitness. Dot com. So check out dot those gentlemen. Dot dot co. Co. Oh, very sorry. Okay, rockstarfitness.co. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, so check out these these fine gentlemen online. And um, yeah, it's been a great show, guys. Thanks ever so much for, for coming on and for helping the guys Thank out. You. Great talking to you, Josh. Thanks, yeah, good talking to you, JP. And Troy, thanks again. Good speaking to you. Thanks for having me on. I'm always ready to go whenever you want me. Yeah. Absolutely, man. And hopefully we'll get to meet up again soon in Mexico. Awesome, brother. All right, guys. See you soon. Bye-bye.